Now, two creatures, of course, that are normally considered completely immobile, fairly boring in terms of how they move, are having a fight. Two speaks-hinged tortoises locked in mortal combat, one pushing the other's bottom. They could also be in some sort of courtship display. I cannot actually tell. Sometimes it's difficult to tell the difference. And I don't know which one of these is the aggressor and which one isn't. But all around here, there is evidence that they have been pushing each other about for much of the morning. There are lots and lots of tracks and scrapings of bush and sand. Let's see what they do here. Uh, they were, uh, the one on the, well, the one closest to us was being pushed around by the one at the back. There we go. There's a huge movement now. Good grief. Now, what would tortoises do? I remember this from when I was a little boy. Tortoises like to push each other over onto their backs. That's the kind of um, modus operandi. There we go. <laughs> And by turning there, by turning a rival over, they render him almost completely helpless. Because as we all know, a tortoise finds it very deep, as this is amazing. A tortoise finds it extremely difficult to get off his back. What a very nasty little fight we're watching here. I've never seen this in the wild. Two aggressive little speaks hinged tortoises. There's probably a lady speaks hinged tortoise around here somewhere. One trying to run away, the other simply not allowing it. This is wonderful. around the other side of the mound there. Oh, you see, every time we move, they start to get a little bit nervous of us. They forget about each other. There we go. <laughs> so the one in the front there, although not noticeably a different size at all, is uh, definitely not the aggressor. He's trying desperately to get away. And notice how when the aggressor gets close, he tucks his head into his shell and uses the little shelf on the plastron, which is the underside of the shell, to try and wedge it underneath his foe and then flip him onto his back. The one in front, however, seems to be slightly faster sprinter than the one at the back. Come on, David, let's go around the tree here. They're going at high speed now, everybody. It's lucky we're so fit, otherwise we'd be unable to keep up with them, isn't it, David? Mm-hmm. I suspect they probably estivated inside this. Leopold's apartment, of course, you're asking about our interference in a matter like this. If one of them was flipped over onto its back and unable to get back onto its front, would I help it? Um, Leopold, of course, the Sabi Sand has a very strict policy of non-interference. That said, I, we do struggle to see a suffering tortoise, Leopold. So I'll leave it up to you to decide what I would do. Look. Headbutt. Headbutt again. <laughs> Onto the back, left leg. Oh, third headbutt. It's like the jab. Now thinking about his next move, he's succeeded with three jabs to the left back thigh. Perhaps thinking about, oh no, there we go. Oh, moving in for a stealthy attack to the side. Maybe this is a mating display, I don't think so though. This 
Of course, the only way they can harm each other is to flip each other over. There's no way that them with their weak jaws in comparison with other animals. There we go. There we go. There we go. But every time we move, <laughs> they freeze. We're just observing. Get on with it. Come on. I think the aggressor looks actually a bit smaller than the one that he's about to flip over. Looking at each other, considering their options. I think now that there is imminent danger for the one that's running away. With that hole there, he could easily be pushed over into it. Push home your attack. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know why I find this so amusing. They look, they look sort of surprised at each other. And although they're very, very serious about their conflict, it's difficult to take something that happens at this speed seriously. Oh, oh, oh. We'll we're going to stand very still now. They're coming towards us. This is ideal. When you are watching Speaks Hinge Tortoise Cage Fighting, No Holds Barred, this is the position you want to be in. Ringside. No rules. Blows below the belt. Blows below the plastron. Above the carapace. It's a tumultuous time here in the world of the Speaks Hinged Tortoise. Whoa, there we go. Another vicious attack coming from the western side of the ring. Two more headbutts, this time to the right leg. Surely that leg can't last long. Michelle, we don't know the gender of these two. We're guessing that they're males because males throughout the animal kingdom from our own species and down to, of course, well, probably the smallest gecko that we get here, well, they fight. The females tend to be far more considered in their approach to life and they just don't box nearly as much and I suspect that there is the pheromones of a female around here and that's why these two are having their conflict. It's very stealthy, two attacks, one to the left back leg, one to the right back leg. Now perhaps he'll move on to the front, or maybe, maybe the front tortoise has tapped out. Oh, look at him looking at us. It's almost like he's sort of playing to the crowd there, isn't it, David? Mike, it could be territorial. you saying, is it maybe territorial and not over a woman? Uh, it's possible, yes. But remember that the, the territorial fight, the only reason to have a territorial fight is because you want to attract women into your territory. So ultimately, I'm afraid, Mike, as with just about all male conflict in the world, it turns out to be largely about sex. Oh! He got him! He caught him with his beak! He caught the back leg! That was a very speedy attack. He's still biting it. I was just saying I didn't think that they could do that. I didn't think their jaws were capable of it. So let's just uh, sort of action replay that. We have the left hand tortoise now grabbing the right hand one on the back left leg with his fairly sharp beak and then pushing him down the mound. Now he's tucked in for the traditional spade swoop of the plastron. He's given up with the jabs and the bites. 
Oh, round 10 is going definitely to the one on the left. I think we better give them some names. We've got the one on the left is slightly lighter than the one on the right. So in the pale trunks, one on the left there attacking viciously the dark trunked one on the right hand side. What's that uh, rather vicious Irishman who cage fights? Uh, Connor... Connor... McGregor. Connor McGregor. We'll call the one on the left Connor McGregor. And the one on the right, what's another cage fight? Any idea? No idea. Um, mm, let's call him Boris. <laughs> Boris the Beast. We'll call him Boris the Beast on the right-hand side, being beaten thoroughly by Conor McGregor, the Speaks Hinge Tortoise. I obviously don't ever want Conor McGregor to find out that I have compared him with a Speaks Hinge Tortoise. That would be dangerous. Janet M, I don't know. Very good question from you. You say, why is the one, why is uh, Boris the Beast not fighting back uh, against the aggression of Conor McGregor? I cannot answer the question to that. I think it's probably got something to do with the fact that he is physically intimidated and trying to get away, but he's of course pinned in the ring. And what is he going to do? Let's find out. Nothing is the answer. Well, it's obviously a round break at the moment. They're taking a no, no, we're in. McGregor pushes the beast further. The beast now wedged up against a grass tussock. Will he be turned? He's going to be turned, surely. McGregor pushing, oh, McGregor, McGregor for the win, pushing thoroughly, the beast only just holding on with his vast size, he's a bit bigger than McGregor, but of course McGregor was born in the streets of Belfast, where there is great viciousness and no fear. prod to the side to see if there's any fight left in Boris the Beast. McGregor doing the equivalent of the tortoise whoop, trying to intimidate him, saying, hit this if you can, chum. But there's no fight left in the Beast. He's trying desperately to get away, stuck in the hexagonal ring that is the circle of life. There seems to be a hiatus now. It's a bit like the grappling that goes on in these cage fights, of course. The wind blows. The scent of conflict in the air assails our nostrils as McGregor forges ahead and steals himself for yet another attack. and then thinks, maybe I'll wait. The beast turning his back once more. Well, an interesting question here. Is the beast perhaps older than the aggressive McGregor? Does the fact that the ridge on McGregor's shell seem much more defined than on the beast's? Could that mean that the beast is an old dog and that his cage fighting days are coming to an end? I think that's an interesting one, actually, in all seriousness, because to me, the beast, which of course is the one on the left, on the right hand side, is bigger actually than the one on the left and maybe there is an element here of the old dog being beaten up by the younger one. I'm not entirely convinced that this isn't some kind of mating ritual. I'm 90% sure it's a fight by two males but the different shape is absolutely noticeable and maybe, I don't know, maybe one is male and one's female but I think they're both males. Let's give them one more go, and then we'll press on to see if we can find something else. <laughs> this 
astounding, astounding morning we're having here. High action. Oh, another jab coming in from McGregor. Aggressive Irishman that he is. Perhaps he's asking, are you done yet, you old dog? Ilana, you, uh, you're 18, uh, 13 years old and you're wondering how long they're going to fight for. I don't know. I'm not sure how long it's been going on. I can say that there are tracks all over in front of the mound here. Um, so they've clearly been at this for some time, probably since daybreak actually. And so it could go on for a couple of hours. And I think the beast's best bet is to stay dead still where he is now. Oh, here we go. McGregor pushing. Pushing. He's got him on the wrong slope, though. I don't know that he'll be able to flip him up the slope. But such, of course, is his strength. Such, of course, is his aggression. His desire to win over the day that maybe the beast will be flipped even on the upslope. This is really incredible. Go on, push, push. Oh, there we go. No ways. This is almost too much to bear. Now he's got, he's just surviving the beast by being wedged up against a little tree. He's on the racks now and he survives again. <laughs> And now he's turned to face McGregor. The beast has had enough. Now there is some serious headbutting here. We all know that's not part of the rules. But once a fight gets to the stage, there are no holds barred. There are no rules. The referee has long since left the ring. The tables are turning. The tables are turning. The old dog's got some fight in him yet. He pushes back and hisses viciously. Did you see that, David? Mm. He says. <laughs> this is just amazing. The crowd is going wild as the beast seemingly returns from retirement. Now, a rest again. And that, everybody, is not the sound of angry bees. Oh no, things have got so exciting here that we may be able to view this fight from the air. Right, we're going to wait and see what happens with these tortoises here. Uh, over, not too far from here, with her roof on, is Taylor.